This week I made oversized tree rings. And when I say oversized, I mean giant. Real quick, I wanna thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. I have been dreaming of this project since March of 2020. So to see it complete literally makes my heart flutter. Let me show you the process on making them. When I bought my commercial building and started thinking of decor ideas for the retail space, I wanted something unique and extraordinary, something beautiful that would fit the theme. I want customers to walk in and be stunned. This project was very difficult. Of course, I do have a CNC machine, so cutting things is actually pretty easy if a file is digital. It was getting a tree ring cookie into a usable digital format that was the tricky part. In my last video, I showed you how I did a tree ring cookie ink print. And my original idea was to fine tune that process enough to be able to scan that image in or take a photo of it, then vectorize it so that the CNC could cut it out. However, I could never get a print clear enough to make that possible. So next option was to get high resolution photos of tree ring cookies, then do a lot of tedious tracing. And when I say a lot, I mean I spent hours upon hours getting these suckers drawn and fine tuned to go into the CNC software to get cut out. Thankfully, we do have technology these days like tablets and smart applications that make this task possible. After I traced a cookie, it would then get thrown into VCarve, which is the CNC software, where it can get toolpath for the CNC to see it and cut it out. Now for the scale, I wanted it to be all over the place. So some of them span across two, three, even some across four sheets of MDF. With only two sheets, it's pretty easy to cut the tree ring in half and place it on two. But once it gets up to three or four, you can use the tiling feature where you can place an image across multiple sheets and the CNC will keep track of where the image begins on one and ends on another. Then it's just a matter of keeping track of the order of the finished tiles which in this case is pretty easy to do since it's a round shape that can be put together. It's beautiful. I went with MDF for this project because it's the easiest to cut with this sort of pattern and thin lines. I very rarely had any blowout and didn't have to worry about any knots or grain direction. The job itself on the CNC took a few hours per cookie. With the scale being so large, a larger bit could first be used to clear out most of the negative space, then an engraving bit to get the finer detail, then finally a profile bit to cut the outside profile out. Okay, so that is one. Now just 10 or maybe 13 more and we'll be set. If you've been following along, you know that I've used Simply Safe for my shop security for a while now. It is incredibly effective, reliable home or shop security that will make sure your property is safe. I recently added Simply Safe to my new commercial shop as well. I can relax knowing my new shop and my tools are professionally monitored 24 seven. And if anything happens, they'll make sure the police are called. Simply Safe makes it easy to secure your space yourself. You can order online, it's delivered right to your door and you can set it up all in under an hour. I found all of the devices to be very reliable, set up as a breeze, and they're easy to use. I've got the Simply Safe sensors to cover windows, the HD cameras inside and out, the door lock lets me grant access remotely, and I can set up a unique access code so I can be alerted to who is unlocking or locking the door. It feels great to know that my shops both have the protection of Simply Safe. If you're ready to easily take control of your home or shop security, then visit simplysafe.com/april to learn more. Thank you to Simply Safe for keeping me and my shop safe. After the cookie was cut, it rode in the back of my truck over to the woodshed to get painted. Now paint, that was a hard decision. Jacob suggested painting the background of the cookie the same blue gray as the wall so that the background negative space would disappear and only the positive tree rings would be seen. He set up a spray area and gave both sides of the cookie a good coating. Then I took a roller to the foreground with a brown color. Now I thought this combination was cool and the visual effect was something unique, but I wasn't quite settled on it. In my head, I really wanted the entire tree cookie to pop out and not just the rings. With that, I decided to see what it would look like if I left the background the lighter brown color of the MDF and the foreground the same brown as the other. All right, I think my heart and my mind is made up. This is the option that I'm gonna be going with. With it decided, I finished this one by hitting the edge off with a foam brush and touching off all of the spots the foam roller couldn't. 
After letting it dry, it was time to hang it up. To pin it to the wall, I first placed a brad nail in the top, then rotated it where I wanted it. Then I littered it with more brad nails to make sure the edges weren't popping up or the portion where the next half would then be butted up next to it. Then I repeated with the second half, taking my time to make sure it was lined up as perfectly with the first as possible. How does it look? Now I could just run around the entire building, looking at it from all different angles and enjoy the beginning of something that will define the space and be part of it forever. So then over here, like a big one that kind of like ovals up and comes out of the ground. And then like maybe a smaller one that disappears into both the column and the upper. Do you see it? Over the next few weeks, I moved on to other projects while my awesome team continued to cut out and paint the remaining tree rings that I traced. Then I could circle back to hang them up on the walls. Do I look tiny? Yeah. Yeah. Planning the wall space was difficult, but I found it easiest to take a photo of each one, then draw on it with my finger to get the visual and play with options. This way, Jacob knew how big to make each tree ring for which space. Ready for this? I also didn't want all of the rings to be complete. I love the idea of them disappearing into the bay door or floor or ceiling. This was simple enough to do by cutting out the entire tree ring, but then using a track saw to make a straight edge to butt up to. Wow. He's one of my favorites. I personally love it. It was seven months to go from concept to hanging in the first one, but it was worth it. I was aiming for visitors to be stunned when walking in. So, if you are ever in the hill country of Texas, then please stop in and tell me if I achieved my goal. Yeah, I think that's the right angle. Whoop. Hey, walking under a ladder is bad luck. What does it mean if you put a ladder under a ladder? I don't know, not that bad luck. Maybe that's like ultimate good luck. Are you in the stream? No. You're not in the frame right now, Mom? As I was saying. <laughs> if you guys want some tree rings on your own wall but don't want the oversized one, I now have these smaller shrunk down versions that you can order over on my website. Actually, I have two more. Hey, Jake, please show them. They're over on the website, links up here.